that's not why that's not why I applied for the job. The challenges we face, both here on the Gulf Coast and throughout America, they're big, they're complex challenges. They don't lend themselves to easy answers or quick fixes. Meeting them requires diligence and perseverance and patience. It also requires more than just government programs and policies. It, it, it requires a renewed spirit of cooperation and com commitment among our citizens. A, a renewed sense of responsibility to ourselves and to one another. Which is why it's important, whether you're dealing with a Republican or a Democrat, that we are maintaining civility, that we are listening to each other, that we are willing to find areas of common ground and cooperation. It's the same spirit that took hold of this city and this region in the days after Katrina. The spirit that, that sustained you to this day. You didn't get tired. As hard as it was, you're still out there, still working hard, still rebuilding, still committed to your city. I've talked a lot of, uh, today about what steps we've taken at the federal level to help the Gulf Coast recover and rebuild, but the true story of this com is, is this community's unbending, uh, unbending resilience. That doesn't start in Washington. It starts right here, in the reborn neighborhoods of the New Orleans. Begins with the men and women who waded into deep water, climbed onto rooftops, and risked their own lives to save people they'd never met before. Begins with the doctors and nurses who stayed behind to care for the sick and the injured, without equipment, without electricity, like our nation's Surgeon General, Dr. Regina Benjamin, mortgaged her house, maxed out on her credit card so she could reopen her clinic and, and help care for victims of the storm. All the volunteer firefighters from this city recently traveled to Iowa to help another community recover from the devastation of a tornado. They went because they still remember when New York City firefighters who'd been through 9-11 came down to New Orleans to help folks out here after Katrina. The story of this city's resilience begins with all the men and women who refused to give up on their homes who've stayed to clean up and rebuild not just their own homes or their own yards or their own lives, but their neighbors too. Here at the University of New Orleans and at other colleges and universities in this city, this year's graduating class will be the first class that chose to apply to a New Orleans school after Katrina. Think about that. They knew what had happened here. They knew how much work was still left to be done, but they chose to come anyway. They wanted to be here. Of all the signs of progress I've mentioned today, that's the most powerful. The idea that there's still people coming to this city, especially young people, who are committed to its future, who are ready and willing to withstand what storms may come, eager to rebuild something better in place of what was. That's the kind of commitment and determination we need at this moment, not just here in New Orleans, but all across America. And if we can harness that spirit, I have no doubt that we will succeed in meeting our greatest challenges. And I am grateful to all of you because I know that you are here because you believe in the possibilities of remaking America to become what it can be. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you. Thank you. Take some, uh, we're going to take some questions now. Now, here, here's, hold on a second. First of all, I'm going to get a sip of water. Excuse me. Well, it's nice to see you. All right. Uh, everybody can sit back down. We're going to take some questions. Now, the uh, here, here's what we're going to do uh, is we're going to just... Uh, Whoever has a question, raise their hand. I'm not going to be able to get to every single person. I, uh, I'm going to go girl, boy, girl, boy, so y'all don't, so, no, so nobody gets mad at me. And uh, if, if there are people with microphones in the audience, so w when I call on you, if you can wait until you get the microphone and introduce yourself so that we know who you are, all right? 
I'll uh, I'll start with uh, that gentleman in in, in the in the right there, Reverend. Good to see you. You look good today. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You bet. I'm Reverend Smith from Rayville, Louisiana. And Mr. President, my my question is that we have a 30 percent dropout rate in the United States, and in my community, I, I what we feel like in our community, we we don't we don't knock uh, private schools, we don't knock other schools, but in our community, we took our dropout rate from a 13 percent to a 0.8, and we have a we have a, a 97 percent uh, attendance rate. That's excellent. We we don't have any gangs in our schools. And I was, and our, G, our uh, graduation rate went up from a 64 percent this year to a, a 73.5, and that's a concern to me in the United States that we are losing so many young men, not only Afro-American men but all men. And my question to you is that I know that my Secretary of State, and I support you and him, we should not look at just different schools, but we should look at all of our children in all of our schools. And, and target that, you know, because no one school doesn't, does not have not all problems. We have problems. Well, look, the, uh, there's a reason why I went to visit uh, Martin Luther King uh, Charter School, uh, because, as I said before, a good news story about New Orleans. Let's face it, the schools weren't working for the children in New Orleans before the storm. And, and, and what has happened is, is that uh, commu this community has actually used the crisis as an opportunity to start rebuilding and try to experiment with new ways of learning. One of the things that we did in the Recovery Act that got very little attention at the time, but I think is one of the most important things we did, is we said, you know, we're going to help schools uh, on construction. We're going to put money into uh, the state so that, you know, the governor doesn't have to lay off uh, or, you know, the school local school districts don't have uh, as big of a problem in terms of uh, their budgets. But what we also did was we set up something called Race to the Top. And what Race to the Top said is we're going to set aside $5 billion that states can compete for, but here's the deal. In order to compete for it, you've got to make sure that you're showing us how are you reducing the dropout rate and improving uh, performance in low-performing schools. How are you improving teacher quality and really emphasizing teachers? Because that's the most important thing in a school is teachers. And, and, and are we giving them the support and the, ins and the training that they need? How are you keeping effective data so that we know what's going on in these schools and people, kids aren't falling through the cracks? So there are a whole series of things that we are initiating to try to be a good partner with states and local school districts to raise our expectations, but also give them the tools. I mean, one of the problems with No Child Left Behind was that it had a bunch of tests and had, I think, legitimately high expectations, but it didn't always follow through with the tools that schools needed in order to actually achieve these goals that had been set. So we want to provide those resources. Now, Reverend, I think you'll, you'll agree with me when I say that... I can work hard, states can work hard, city can work hard, All the, every government official can work hard to try to improve our schools, but if our parents don't insist on excellence from their children, we're, we won't succeed. So that's why you know, when I visited the school today, I had beautiful kids, I mean they were just charming. And, and, and smart, and they're sitting there and introducing themselves and describing all their projects, and they were very proud of their school. You could tell that the adults had invested in making sure that they understood they were important, they were special, but we also had high expectations of them. They were sitting still. They were, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Uh, just that home training makes a big difference. Now, not, not, not every child... Not every child is going to get the support they need at home, let's face it. But all of us.